Okay, so this is before we can use the calorimeter, we have to calibrate it. So this particular video is looking at method one, calibrating it using electricity. So when we add electricity, we're going to measure the voltage, the current and the time. The time has to be in seconds. Those things together will give you the amount of energy that you've added with your electricity. And we're going to measure the temperature rise. So calibration factor is what we're trying to find for our bomb calorimeter and it's how many joules for every degree that it goes up. It looks like um, the specific heat capacity but we've left off the mass because it's always the same mass of water, for example 100 grams maybe. So yeah, what we're trying to find is how many joules does it take to heat this whole thing um, by one degree. So what you would do if you're trying to calibrate it, you'd measure the initial temperature, then you turn your power on, and this is basically like a giant kettle. Um, you're adding electricity into here, which is heating the water. Uh, you're going to be measuring the voltage of the electricity, the current, and the time that you leave it on for. So you leave it on, then you need to turn off the power, and you're going to measure the temperature the final temperature that, um, that it reaches, which may take a little while, so you have to be stirring and waiting and recording the temperature, and then you've got your initial and final, you can work out how much uh, the change in temperature, how much it's increased by, and you know the amount of energy that you added to get that. So this is what I've been talking about, pause this, you could write this down. So to determine the calibration factor, you have to add a known amount of energy, and we're going to use electricity. So yeah, it's just like boiling a kettle. Um, you may have thought that this IT looks familiar. It's because we use it in Faraday's law. So when you're adding electricity, the current and the time tells you the coulombs, um, and that you ultimately turn into the number of moles of electrons. So that's where this comes from. If we measure the voltage, then we can also work out the amount of energy that these electrons were carrying. So yeah, this equals Q. Sometimes you might see um, the little Q or energy equaling V big Q. That's why we don't use a large Q, I guess, in chemistry because that's referring to coulombs. Um, okay, so you use that to work out the joules. So Q equals VIT, equals the number of joules, and you want to work it out for how, many, how much temperature did it go up by. So this is an example. So pause this and write it down. A bomb calorimeter was calibrated by passing that um, amount of current. So that's your I. Current's measured in amps. So if it's in milliamps, you would need to convert it to amps. There's a thousand milliamps in an amp. Um, so you must make sure that your time is in seconds. If it's in minutes, you need to convert it. There's 60 seconds in a minute. Uh, at a potential difference, so the, the voltage, so you've got your VIT, the temperature of the water in the calorimeter rose by this amount. So we want to know our calibration factor. So calibration factor is how many joules for every degree. VIT gives you your joules. This is how many joules for that many degrees. So if you calculate this, then you'll find how many joules for one degree. So normally for bomb calorimeters, it's quite large. And so you could convert that to kilojoules. So be very careful. Is your calibration factor in joules or kilojoules? Um, the calibration factor means yeah, that we just worked out that it would take 1,175 joules to heat this entire thing, the water and all of, all of the instruments in it, by one degrees. So once you know that, then we can use that to work out if we did a combustion reaction or food in here, 
then we can use our calibration factor. If it went up by 10 degrees, then it would go up by 10 times that amount. Um, if your calorimeter is not losing any heat, you turn the um, power on, and then this is the entire time it's heating. And when you turn it off, no heat will be lost if it's uh, perfectly insulated. So that would be our temperature rise. If, the, if you keep measuring this though, and you find that the temperature is slowly going down, it means that you're losing heat. And most calorimeters, you probably would lose some. So the entire time this was being heated, some heat was being lost. So this temperature here is not actually the highest temperature it could have reached. Um, if we draw a line of best fit between all these dots and extrapolate them back, we can see that the highest temperature it could have reached if we weren't losing heat the entire time we were heating it would have been here. So um, if you see a, a graph with the line that's slowly going down, just draw 